So welcome back to Culture Shock. Culture where, Shock. Yes. Where today we're looking at more of Japanese culture in the form of doujinshi. 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 Mm. So these are, well, actually the definition is part of why we're doing this episode. Because uh, a lot of fans who know doujinshi uh, means, generally I um, think it means Japanese comics. I'm going to show you one side of this. Uh, fan comics. Uh, various ki kinds. So that's different than a manga? Exactly. So a manga is a professionally published comic, uh, published in a magazine, you know, things along those lines, whereas a doujinshi is made by fans, for fans, in an amateur way. Uh, however, doujinshi actually started as simply fan produced or amateur content. Doujinshi just means something that somebody makes essentially not for profit on their own. Mm. So it so actually started out in the 1800s as a way for people to just publish things like um, personal diaries and things along those lines to the public, but not as a published book, for example. So folks would um, write up something and then just hand print a few copies of it and sell it or otherwise distribute it around. Has it always been illustration? No, actually. In fact, the, the, um, the early uh, uh, versions were all text. It was just uh, fiction or nonfiction that people would publish by themselves. Whoa. Yeah. Um, which kind of made sense because that was a, the easier way of doing it. But then over the 20th century, it evolved into much more of a, to be dominated by comics. There's still plenty of doujinshi that are uh, text, but they're the minority now, very much so. So uh, it's more of the small press, free press. Exactly. Publishing, self-publishing. Uh, precisely. So it's, it, it's, it's folks who are completely amateurs. They may have done it before, but they are publishing this in small quantities just for um, a little bit of sale. So they don't have the same backing of a huge publishing house distribution network. Exactly, yeah. Um, and that, that's part of the, the idea, is that this is made more um, by fans out of passion, um, as opposed to out of any expectation of serious profit. Um, now, during the um, 80s, that really switched. Uh, before that, doujinshi were typically um, fan-produced original works. Uh, by the 80s, it switched over into being more parodies of existing works. Mm. So folks would take existing characters and switch them around and tell their own stories with those characters. So less, less original character, mm -hmm. more original story based on pre-existing characters. Exactly. So folks would take characters from um, Star Blazers, um, uh, which I always have to say is Space Battleship Yamato in, in Japanese, so folks don't get <laughs> Sometimes upset. Sometimes they don't know. Right, exactly. Um, or, you know, Gigantor or Astro Boy or what have you. They take those characters and tell their own stories with those characters. So there's, there's something similar with that in the U.S. called fan fiction. Right. Is a similar concept? Very similar. In fact, you know, you, you could very much say that fan fiction in America is equivalent to doujinshi um, uh, in Japan. It's just doujinshi is sort of this more umbrella word for anything fan-made um, or anything fan-produced that is kind of paper. Mm. So uh, published. Published, but not, exactly. not necessarily large batch publishing. Right, precisely. Uh, and, and you'll see that a lot in what's called Comicette, or uh, the comic market. We did done an episode on that, which you can go and look at and find on our channel, um, which is this huge uh, convention where folks will sell doujinshi to other people. Now, when folks hear about that and they hear, well, wait, you're taking existing copyrighted characters and you're selling comics of that, how does that work? Mm. Um, uh, there's been a lot of debate over this over time, and there a few publishers have challenged it. Um, but the general um, decision, or the, the general consensus among copyright experts, even in Japan, is that doujinshi technically is kind of slide under the radar because they're, they're not being published for wide distribution. You, know, you can go to a into Comic Cat for one day and buy one of twenty copies of a of, of a doujinshi. That's not considered publishing in the sort of general copyright sense of the word. <laughs> um, so the, the, the idea is that the copyright is meant to protect the copyright owner from somebody, you know, redistributing their stuff in large Just quantities. Just copying it off. Yeah, exactly. Taking all the profit. Right. And so when you're taking this and doing it in such small quantities, it, it's, it's not quite fair use, but it's, it's in that kind of a category. It, it's not something that they're, they're going to take the brand and... The off with the profit, profits. Yeah. It, it, it points back to the original references, mm -hmm. back to the original work in, in some sense. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so that, that's exactly the, uh, the point, is that um, this doesn't hurt the original creators in any way, and it does do a, a certain form of uh, marketing for the original work. 
that being said, how how do how how does the original work? It must vary from uh, what fans are mm -hmm. creating. Are there uh, very different uh, subjects <laughs> that are dealt with? Very right? much so. Yes. <laughs> so um, there's a a uh, shall we say uh, a lot of people are aware of doujinshi through their more adult doujinshi. So. A, a, oh, a large adults. amount of doujinshi has, shall we say, adult content. Um, and by adult, so, I so mean... So we're not talking about taxes? And no, clothes. no, we're sadly. About we're, we're talking about um, themes removing your clothes. Those, and those, yes, okay, yes. that adult. <laughs> that, that, that kind of adult. <laughs> um, uh, and again, this gets back to the fact that you know, it used to be doujinshi were more about just telling stories of the characters. And now there's a, more of a, uh, an adult uh, side of it. Um, but there's <laughs> plenty of them that are not. So um, that's uh, part of the, the complexity is that you know, when you talk about Dojinchi, you've got to be aware that there is this sort of, sort of larger uh, market for these things. Do they have uh, Dojinchi for, for kids' stories as well? Oh, or? yes. And, and any, any sort of anime series or manga series you can think of, there are Dojinchi for that series. Yes. Um, all kinds of Dojinchi for those series, yes. So, so the whole spectrum the of... The whole uh, spectrum. Stuff that's... Acceptable for kids and stuff that's not acceptable for kids. Very much so. Following rule... Uh, mm, rule 34. 34. Yes, yes. Anything that you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody there's has... There's of it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, now, th what's also interesting is that there's kind of a, a strong male-female divide within the uh, doujinshi. Oh. So, um, uh, doujinshi made by men for men tend to be more on the traditional um, adult end of the spectrum, where it's, it's characters... Um, uh, um, enjoying each other's company, shall we say, mm -hmm. a lot. Um, on the female side of this, there's a lot more um, homosexual content. There's a lot really? of male characters getting into relationships, not necessarily sexual, but um, just uh, a lot of strong male-male relationships in those. Mm -hmm. And those are marketed more toward, towards women. So there's this very interesting divide. And obviously, folks cross back and forth. But you see a lot you know, that very clearly um, uh, across the gender divide. Hmm. It's very interesting. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, um, those are some aspects. We actually have an example of a uh, Jinji here. This might be considered um, not safe for work, depending on where you work. It's kind of gray area, you know, uh, uh, um, so depending on how you say it. But this is a, an actual Jinji from Japan. Um, this was produced back when the Tokyo Youth Ordinance Bill Amendment came into law, which affected... Um, Affected the legality of selling certain pornographic materials in Tokyo. Hmm. And there was a lot of debate back and forth. So folks then drew a manga um, about this subject. And it consists of various characters debating this um, between themselves. This is actually the mangaka, the, the, the manga writers themselves in comic form debating this. So it's almost functioning as a newspaper in that respect. Exactly. Because it's covering issues and subjects in the news, in the politics, related directly to their industry. Exactly. Um, and then they introduce new characters who um, are able to um, relate certain um, elements of that story and sort of explain certain sorts sort of that story by doing, um, by being sort of personifications of various elements of the story. Ah, so, so, so there's some creative license that enters into the story. Exactly. Completely news. It's news <laughs> plus here's right. our interpretation the creative spin exactly they even bring in the lawmakers who are responsible for that and draw a whole fist of the north star parody <laughs> with those characters which is pretty awesome uh, we have a whole storyline in there about them uh, uh, you know fighting each other and your blood and guts and all that stuff so it's them kind of having fun with the lawmakers um, but this is a good example where um, even in here you're taking very specific um, art styles and you're you're mimicking those uh, but you're telling your own story with those characters in a way that is hopefully entertaining and interesting. Mm. Uh, so this was just self-published. You can go in and, and buy it. Fortunately, in this case, folks, um, some folks took this and then translated it and provided, provided that to various uh, English speakers who could, who could buy a copy. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Uh, I noticed you're, you, when you were looking through, it seems that the back covers the front ah. and the front covers the back. Yes. As... As is typical for for, for Japanese the Japanese language. So um, yeah, Japanese books read from right to left, shall we shall we say, instead of saying back to front because it's front to back for for them. Um, so you start with this side, and then you you read through that way, and you have to get used to 
to so reading left to the right. The opposite direction. The exact of opposite direction. The way we read U.S. Mm -hmm. Marvel comics, for yeah, example. Yeah, exactly. And if you see a, a, a manga that, is, that reads the other way, in our traditional way, that means it's been flopped, meaning that they've taken the art and flipped it um, <laughs> so that the art actually you know, reads in the, in the right for, way. For, for audiences overseas? Right, for audiences overseas. A Ghost in the Shell is a great example of that, where the, uh, the manga, it's a single volume, was flopped by the original um, artist. He, he went in page by page and touched up and, and flopped all the oh, artwork. Wow, that's more complicated than just exactly. left well, and right. Well, here's the thing. You know, if, if a character is like this, um, normally you flop it, they're like this. Uh, they've changed hands. They've a changed right hands. hand, a person's now left, the right. watch is on the other yeah, side. Yeah, so, so we went in and retouched all that artwork so it was correct. Oh, wow. Yeah, pretty, pretty that's crazy. a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And it's, fortunately, folks got used to the idea of reading Japanese order, so that isn't as necessary anymore because it was a lot of work. Well, once people realize that that difference exists, then it's mm -hmm. just a small step to, okay, I'll read this one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, in terms of getting dojinshi, unfortunately,